All right. Welcome to episode 27 of the Jake Blanchard podcast, brought to you always by the good folks at Fellowship Brand Premium Men's Grooming Products. Go to fellowshipbrand.com, enter JBP at checkout, get yourself some free shipping on first time orders for products for hair on your face. Uh, my guest today is David Meltzer. He's a co founder of Sports One Marketing and formerly served as the CEO of the renowned Lee Steinberg Sports Entertainment in, uh, Agency which was uh, the inspiration for the movie, Jerry Maguire. His life's mission is to empower over 1 billion people to be happy. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit because that blows my mind. Um, uh, this simple yet powerful message has led him to an incredible journey uh, around value. Uh, so his content, his communication, all those types of things, uh, it's been a part of his mission for the last 20 years. Uh, and he's excited to share what he's doing as well as talk a little bit about some of his free uh, weekly trainings uh, to empower people to be happy, which I've attended and I absolutely love, by the way. Uh, he's a business expert, motivator, author, and so much more. David Meltzer, welcome to the podcast, sir. Thank you so much, Jake. It's so great to be here. I love finding another one of those people that I know will be the thousand to empower a thousand to be happy. Yeah, that, that is awesome. So let's, let's get started. Like, Let's, let's start at the beginning, man. Like, I'd love to hear about how your journey started. You have such a, like a positive presence uh, and you found yourself in the sports entertainment world. And now you're just, you're known as being such a, a happy, like gratitude filled individual. Like, where does this come from? Well, I was blessed. It came from my mom, my grandparents, uh, even a little bit of my dad. Uh, but, you know, I grew up with a single mom who, you know, just demanded gratitude forgiveness and accountability. She demanded, you know, education. Uh, but I didn't, you know, have any troubles in my childhood other than financial stress, uh, which was good and bad because that led me to thinking that, well, I guess money is the only thing I have to worry about because I'm always happy. And only time I'm unhappy is if I catch my mom crying because something breaks down or we don't have enough money for something like to eat or go to summer camp. And so, I set off on a journey that, you know, money would buy me happiness and love, meaning it would buy my mom a house and a car. Uh, and, you know, that's really what inspired and motivated me. But I've always been, I wouldn't even say an optimist. I've always been a toptimist, uh, you know, finding the light, the love and the lessons and everything. I just didn't really know how to articulate how and why it was in my life. And more importantly, articulate that quantitative value uh, to inspire other people to be happy. Oh, that's a phenomenal perspective. So, so you set out on a journey, um, and and you know, obviously, we're we're all coin operated, I think, to some degree, right? Especially if you're, uh, you know, looking to uh, to to raise in the ranks of whether it be corporate America or building your own businesses, etc. So, lessons learned from kind of that journey of becoming CEO, of one of the the largest sports entertainment, if not the largest sports entertainment in the world. Yeah, well, you know, to get there. Uh, I had to keep my options open, which I think is a really great benefit of wanting to be rich. I always said to people, the good news about wanting to be rich is that you keep your options open to the highest paying you know, offer. So even out of law school, I took a sales job in the internet, internet, despite my mom telling me the internet was a fraud, a fad, it never worked, I'd lose everything. Uh, and then, you know, just continually reaffirming money buys love and happiness. I went to the wireless proxy server space and the middleware space and realized, man, you're not going to have to transcode the internet. There'll be handheld computers called smartphones. And I actually, before I went to Lee Steinberg, what helped me get that job is I was CEO of the world's first smartphone. Uh, back then they called them convergence devices. And so uh, being the CEO of that company uh, gave me the prestige, the money, uh, and the skill sets where when I met Lee Steinberg, the most notable sports agent in the world, within 48 hours, he hired me to take Jeff Morad's position as COO. Uh, and I, you know, for me, a dream job, since my dream was to be in sports, to play, you know, professional football or baseball, to be, you know, the guy at Lee Steinberg where they made the movie Jerry Maguire was incredible. The only interesting thing was I was a multimillionaire. I had my dream job. I married my dream girl. I had my dream kids. I lived in the dream house in the dream city of San Diego. With unbelievable. I mean, I had everything. But for the first time in my life, that top to mist left me. I, I was empty and just searching. 
uh, for something. And I, you know, went into, you know, a terrible spiral, surrounding myself with the wrong people, the wrong ideas, not paying attention to my family, not paying attention to my business, not paying attention to my health, uh, partying way too much. Uh, and that all came to a head, you know, really with three lessons over almost a 10 year period, three big red flags, it came to a head finally when my wife threatened to leave me and tell me that I was lost and I better take stock in who I was over 15 years ago. Uh, and that created, you know, this rebirth of Toptimism with a new enlightenment, a more spiritual perspective on what used to be a very pragmatic practice. Wow, that's fascinating. So then you, you so then you pivot, right? And then so now your your mission is to empower over a billion people to be happy. And I and I'll I'll link the video. You sent me a video uh, as well that I, I'm just a, a short on like what that means. Then you said it at the beginning of the podcast, a thousand influencing a thousand, and what that can mean. But could you could you share that a little bit? Like, did you develop a mission at that point when you were pivoting, or did this come up along the way? I did. I, de I developed what I realized allowed me to feel empowered to teach people to be happy. So I started with four practices, the ones that my mom you know, really ingrained in me before I was three. Gratitude, which I realized gave me perspective to learn to love everything I do, to treat pain as a indicator, a turn signal of the lessons to learn, not a stop sign. It gave me, you know, this unbelievable perspective in life. And then forgiveness gave me peace and certainty. You know, I always have strove, strove to forgive the unforgivable. And I started to realize there's no certainty in the world, especially with the pandemic. The only certainty that I could find was if I was actually capable of forgiving, it gave me certainty. Uh, and a lot of people have to dig deep to allow that to unravel. I know as we had a pre-conversation, you're like, I'm starting to get it, Dave. There's a lot of layers to the onion uh, when you're studying this stuff and living this stuff. So that's one of the layers of, I think everyone gets why forgiveness gives you peace in all relationships and all things you do. But certainty is a byproduct of it as well, which takes a little bit more uh, practice. And then accountability gave me control. Uh, you know, and these are things that I can teach other people, you know, how to live your life, not in liability, where you go below the line into blame, shame and justification, where 99% of the people live, but living in accountability, not liability, where you're accountable, where you've attracted it to your life. And what are you supposed to learn from it? Everything I teach is lessons based. Life's about lessons. The lessons will keep on coming until you learn them. If you don't learn them, they'll result in pain. The coolest thing about lessons that I know is you will forget every lesson you ever learn. At one time or another, I forget gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability, still today. But you have the power to access all the lessons, even ones that you haven't learned yet. You have the power to access them, and it's getting easier and easier to access those lessons because of technology. Um, and that then shifted the paradigm from giving to receive from a scarce world where I had, you know, lived in a world of not enough where things happened to me as a victim to shift into a world of just enough for me, a positive world, an optimistic world. Everything happens for me. I'm not worried about the outcomes. I give to receive. But the problem with that is everything is a trader in a negotiation. Everything attached an emotion to an outcome. It truly, for me, was a scarce world because I ended up buying things I don't need. If I wasn't happy, I'd buy more things. If I wasn't happy, I'd buy different things. If I wasn't happy, I'd buy things to impress other people. If I still wasn't happy, I'd buy things to impress people I didn't even like. <laughs> mm. It was a terrible spiral. So I shifted the paradigm into inspiration where things don't happen to me or for me like an optimist. They actually happen through me for others. And shifting this paradigm then allowed me to be worthy of everything I receive and realize that everything I receive is already there, that I have to use my free will to clear the interference, the voids, the shortages, and obstacles to what I want and allowing those things to happen. And so living in a world of more than enough now more than enough of everything for everyone allowed me to realize that these values I could teach to people. And then through experience, I came up with five daily practices. And this was the cornerstone of a beach walk that I had after one of my 12 year old, my 12 year old daughter's friends committed suicide. And I couldn't understand, like I understand teenagers killed themselves. I understand older people, 
you know, that have drug problems, addictions, and depression. And it, it was beyond me why a 12 year old, you know, would do that. And so as I was looking, going, man, I started doing research. I was like, we got a happiness problem in the world. That's what we have. And I started thinking, how can I cure the happiness problem? Because I am a super happy guy, like you mentioned. You know, most people know the authentic frequency of happiness because it's so viral, right? You witness happiness, you get happy. It's, uh, you, can't, you can wear your mask all day long around Dave Meltzer, you're still gonna be happy. I just can't see your smile. But it's a completely viral disease that strengthens us mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. Happiness is amazing. So I started putting together like the businessman I am, a pragmatic system to be happy. Like, what was it? You know, and it came up with these four values, gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration, and then five daily practices. And I decided walking on the beach that my life's mission was going to be to find a thousand people like you, Jake, that I could teach, that would watch my videos, allow things to unravel for them, be there to support them on their platforms so they can empower a thousand people to empower a thousand people to be happy. A thousand times a thousand was a million, a million times a thousand was a billion. The only hurdle I faced was the initial onset of telling people this idea, because I knew that in my life, when I came up with these ideas that were extraordinary, you know, that people laugh at me, make fun of me, scoff at me and tell me I'm crazy. And then they applaud me. And so, I had to ask myself, was I willing, you know, to go through that again, considering everything I had gone through in my life and achieved and the peace that I was living, was I willing to have people laugh at me, scoff at me and make fun of me? And I decided to make that commitment. And sure enough, you know, I had family members who I love say, hey, what do you, who do you think you are? Jesus Christ, you know, who do you think you are? Tony Robbins, you think you're gonna power over a billion people? You're crazy, why don't you focus in on building your sports business and leave that to the real inspirational people in the world? You, you can't do that. And uh, as you know now, here I am four years into my mission uh, and well beyond where I thought I'd be and people have stopped laughing at me, scoffing at me and making fun of me. And most people applaud me and wanna help me and they realize what an extraordinary mission it is and how important of a mission it is. Uh, and everyone has the capability to help. Uh, that, that, that's incredible. And, and obviously you're making a massive impact. I mean, you're very active on uh, one social media. You're also a very sought after uh, coach consultant. I mean, you have a, such a depth of experience uh, in building businesses uh, and specifically helping individuals find you know, that knack, find that thing uh, internally to them to, to help them on their journey. You do a free coaching call on Friday though. Right? <laughs> Anybody can join. Tell me about that. I mean, so I know that there's, you, you've talked about your, um, you know, inspiration, accountability, forgiveness, gratitude, those types of things. Where does the, uh, I'm going to take this skill set that I've acquired and I'm essentially just going to drop gold nuggets on people on Fridays uh, in, in free trainings. Like talk a little bit about that. What, what was the inspiration for it? Well, over 20 years I've been doing it, it started that, you know, my expertise over 20 years ago was sales. So a lot of people would ask me for help in sales. Uh, and so I said, you know what, meet me at lunch on Friday. <laughs> this is within my own company. You know, I was at Lee Steinberg. I'm like, meet me at lunch on Fridays. I'll buy you lunch. Come in here. And I think it started Friday trainings with like five people from my company that were interested in my help. And I bought them all lunch every Friday. And then they said, can we do it again next Friday? And they brought a couple of friends. Then they said, can we do it again next Friday? And then over 20 years, you know, people would fly in uh, and, you know, we would have, you know, 100 people, 200 people at a Friday training in person. Um, and then COVID hit. And I was stuck because I'd been doing Friday. And it evolved from sales to everything, ego training, sales training, uh, scaling a business, all the different things that I've learned over the years. I did a mommy issues training, you know, I do everything. Wow. And uh, so I, um, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna use Zoom, which I wasn't a big fan of Zoom, to be honest, before the COVID. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you why, because I like to do my emails while I talk to people. 
because I, I practiced to refocus so many years that I'm capable of refocusing on two or three things. Remember everyone, you can only focus on one thing. There's no such thing as multitasking. I mean, you can't do two things at once, but you can build a muscle and refocus that makes it appear as if you do things at once. And two, remember your thought moves faster than the speed of light. So when you start truly getting exceptional at refocusing, you can play with time and bend time. And it's an extraordinary gift to expand the accessibility, productivity, and gratitude that you can have because time opens up for you. Well, anyway, I decided, you know, that I would do this online. And here we are, you know, over 25,000 people uh, registered every Friday for the free trainings at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I give my email out. You can see david at dmeltzer.com. Just email me to join. I do get my books, my exercises, and my guides for free as well. But here's the coolest thing that happened. You know, I have one of the top podcasts in the world. Yep. I have billion, billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and entertainment. Everything, everyone you can think of, from Cameron Diaz to Dan Aykroyd to Danica Patrick to Ray Lewis, you know, Hall of Famers, owners of teams, Tillman Fertitta, who wrote the forward to my book, and, you know, John Paul DiGiorio, you name it, 650 episodes of gold nuggets from the greatest minds, their playbook to success, Deepak Chopra, you know, you yeah. name it, you can get it. The number one downloaded podcast I have now, I do them every day, is my training. That just shows you how much people want to learn, right? So not only now do people watch it live, over 25,000 people, but hundreds of thousands of people download it every day and, watch, and listen to the replays of the training. So for me, I think it's the greatest uh, success of my life. It's allowing me to plant seeds under trees that I'll never sit under. And it's really, you know, Jake and I, you, you and I have really never spoken before, but you know, you have seen videos and excerpts and downloads. And of course. It's changing people's lives. And, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna create a collective consciousness of abundance. And someday I'm gonna sit in a world where people realize, man, we have more than enough and things are gonna come through them for others. What maybe a, a lessons learned here as you're in, in the same vein of thinking is, you know, there's a lot of people who are kind of, uh, this season of their life is a really cold, harsh winter. Let's call it that, right? I mean, the COVID, Obviously, there's a lot of business impacts. There's a lot of mindset impacts as well. People are suffering in silence out there, um, specifically around uh, the times. And what would you say to somebody who feels like they're in their trough down at the bottom? You know, what, 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 do, what do you see? Well, first of all, let's look at what I teach. And number one, mindset. You have control of your mindset. You have control of your perception and your forgiveness and your accountability. So what I want you to work on first is that you have control in what you see and you need to change what you see, right? We uh, change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. So I want to teach you how to find the light, the love and the lessons in the way that you see things to change your mindset. Next, you have control of your heart set. So not only, I think some people see the right things, but they have the wrong heart set. They feel the wrong things. They've assigned an emotion to an idea or a thought or a vision that's one that's not positive. In other words, they're voting for what's missing in their lives. They're voting for what they don't want in their lives. They're paying attention plus giving intention to what other people want for them. And that's a for sure route of getting what's missing, what you don't want or what other people want to create void shortages and obstacles for yourself. And so then I would... Uh, teach them that they have control of that heart set and give them mechanisms to effectuate it through these values and daily practices. And then finally, I would teach them about the conscious continuum, about how to enjoy, regardless of the changes that occur, regardless, there is no uncertain times, by the way. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's such uncertain. No such thing. Every single day that's ever existed has been uncertain. In fact, I always tell people, anybody out there can tell me exactly what's gonna to happen tomorrow. Call me today. I know how to make billions of dollars. I'll donate all my to charity and you can keep as much as you want, uh, but there's never been a certain day. So what happens is we're in accelerated change. So what I want to teach people is there's a continuum that you can enjoy the consistent every day, persistent without quit, 
pursuit of your potential with the right mindset, heart set, and understanding of conscious continuum. And the conscious continuum exists between 10,000 new thoughts that we have every day that we want to control, how those impact the 40,000 of the subconscious thoughts that are stuck within the memory, the neural pathways that we have, and how accessing the thoughts that we want will then create a signal to the unconscious competencies that we have that dictate your personality traits, your characteristics, obsessions and addictions that create your frequency that attract what you want. Now, the law of attraction is something I fully believe in, but it's misunderstood. You, it doesn't go right from your vision board to the universe. It goes from your vision board into your senses, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your taste, your ears, which talks to your subconscious. If you look at the vision board every day, it then goes and creates a neural pathway in your mind. It becomes one of the 40,000 of the same thoughts. If you keep accessing it from that board through your senses, it then talks to your quantum memory, which then sends a signal out and says, this house is coming, this car is coming, this trip with your family is coming, whatever's on your vision board. Remember the mathematical equation of luck is what you pay attention to and what you give intention to will create the coincidences in your life. So it's not just the law of attraction, it starts with the law of gravity that says, you know, create everything that will come down to me, but then it goes to the law of Goya, which my mentor John Asaroff taught me, right, get off your ass, the law of Goya. You know, so many people think they can sit at home high on their mom's couch, dreaming about what they want, staring at a vision board, not gonna happen. Uh, you gotta utilize the law of gravity, the law of Goya, and then the law of attraction will occur through the conscious continuum. Uh, and those three things together, regardless of what happens outside of you, allow you to find what you want inside of you. And if you find what you want inside of you, you will then see that it manifests itself, it materializes outside of you. You cannot find outside of you what you haven't found inside of you first. Wow. Oh, what a wonderful sentiment. I, I, one, I love Goya. Uh, I'm a, I'm stealing that immediately. Um, you know, for, for me, I it's, stole it. <laughs> you know, for me, it's, you know, that figure it out, you know, FIO, FIO, just get up and move, take immediate action and, and figure it out. I've heard that. Um, but get off your ass and move, go, go get it. I absolutely love it. Um, Hey David, I know that we're, uh, scarce on time here. Um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, your game time decision making book, the one that you can see over there uh, behind your left shoulder. Um, I read the preface on it and I haven't read the book yet, but who is this book for, man? This is a really interesting concept. Yeah. So what I did is I have some hyper complex uh, ideas and lessons. And what I found out through writing so many books is that Meltzerisms work for Meltzer, but they don't work for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Coach Holtz at Notre Dame said, it's not what you say, it's what they hear. So I wanted to write a book that everybody could hear. And what I learned through my career is people love sports. And I had a wealth of sports stories to teach these hyper complex lessons. People learn through stories much better. So what I did is I took 10 lessons on how to be happy by making the right decisions in your life in 10 chapters. I wrote a pregame analysis, basically using sports as a backdrop to explain, hey, I wanna teach you that you need to take inventory of your values every day in order to effectuate what you want, but using a sports story to do it. I then go ahead and use sports stories to teach the lesson and illustrate people like Tom Brady or Belichick or Danica Patrick or Ray Lewis or you know Tony Gwynn or whoever it may be, Coach Wooden, you know, he's easy. Uh, and then I do a post-game analysis of every chapter. Hey, here was what I was trying to teach you through the sports stories. Here's the sports stories to show you what I was trying to teach you in clear examples that you'll hear. And then to summarize, here is what we should have learned from those sports stories. <laughs> and then I move on to the next lesson. Uh, you know, it became an instant, you know, bestseller. It's a powerful book. But more importantly, it reminds me of those I didn't like to read when I was little. So when they used to have the book, uh, you got to buy books or go use books at the library. And I would always pick out the sports stories of Jim Brown or Jackie Robinson or, and I'd love to read them. And so I wanted to take some of the most resistant lessons that people hurt their brains on and put it into the Jackie Robinson story 
so that people love and enjoy most of all hear what I'm trying to teach. Well, David, hey, we are uh, certainly wrapping up on time here. I want to thank you again uh, for sharing your perspective, sharing your journey, uh, and outlining, you know, what you got so much cool stuff going on. Like you said, never one of the top podcasts in the world. You've written three, maybe four. Like, the, the books I found was Compassion Capitalism. I have Connected Goodness. Uh, we've got Game Time Decision Making. And, and what was wrote, your other one? I wrote a Jack Hill called Unstoppable, the guy that, from Chicken Soup for the Soul. So That's right. 2018. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Uh, and, and again, where can folks find you on social? And then if they're going to Goya and join your Friday calls, tell them how to do that again, if you don't mind. Sure. I'm at David Meltzer. Google David Meltzer. Go to dmeltzer.com. But email me directly, david at dmeltzer.com. I answer all my emails myself. I can give you my books, my exercises, my guys for free. We got private groups to coach you one-on-one, for business advisory, anything you need. I'm of service and of value. David at dmeltzer.com. Sir, again, I appreciate your time and uh, you have an awesome afternoon. Take care. Thanks, Jake.